What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be breaking down more of your mechanics, but first, a quick note, this video is sponsored by trevorbauer.com, the official home for all Bauer outage merchandise. So take a second, head on over there, get yourself some merchandise, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out and I'll give you all a second to do that. Okay, so last time I did some mechanics, y'all had some good feedback, you said, can you break down some big leaguers so we can see what it looks like when it's all actually applied? So we have here on the screen, Randy Johnson. I pulled this clip from YouTube, so I'm gonna play it through so you can see what it looks like if you don't remember <laughs> what Randy Johnson's delivery looked like. Uh, this is towards the end of his career, but it's a pretty good representation. Okay, and that is the big unit. So let's talk about the big unit's delivery real quick. The eight key parts of the delivery, starting with the drift phase. So here we go. Here he is lifting his leg, and you can see that his body is actually drifting forward some into leg lift, all right? If we look back here, this is where his leg is. He lifts it up and you can see it's drifted forward. So he's definitely nailing the drift and it's not too aggressive. Uh, you can see his hips are level. Uh, he's not elevated the front hip at all, so he's in a good position. The next phase is the drop phase. Okay, is there a distinct drop? Well, not as much drop in his delivery and we'll talk about why that is in a second. Let's look at the rotation phase. There go the hips into landing. The front foot is down right there. You can see the pant leg kind of buckle right here so you know that there's force being applied to it. Bang. Now look at the hips into it. Look at the right hip right here. Sorry, the left hip. It is definitely rotating into landing. Okay, so he gets the rotation phase. Let's look at the block. That front leg firms up and extends. So he definitely gets the block phase down. You don't see any sort of like this knee moving forward. Uh, you don't see any of this like this part of the body sinking into the front hip. It's a pure rotation of that hip around. Bam, all right. So he gets the drift, drop, rotate, and block. Well, let's look at the separation. So at foot strike, look at this. Hard to see on this line, but the, from what we can tell from this angle, uh, this shoulder here is actually retracted back this way relative to the line between him and the plate. Um, so if you looked at this from the top angle, uh, Randy's hips might be kind of like this, and his shoulders would be kind of like this, all right? And the plate would be over here, and the mound is back here. And you can see that there's a good, you know, this, this line of his shoulders would be somewhat, that's a terrible line, uh, but you can see the illustration I'm trying to make. The line would be somewhat closed relative to the line to the plate. All right, so he gets the separation down. Let's look at the load. You can see this elbow is retracted out here. You can see this scap is back. Okay, so he's loading his scaps correctly. He doesn't have the glove like over here where it's in front of his torso where he can't rotate. All right, so the loading phase is good. Let's play this thing forward. Look at the spiral. Okay, the elbow comes here, it rolls in, the ball is inside of 90 degrees, so he's able to maintain that position. So the elbow goes through this really nice spiraling. And then the throw phase, uh, here's the torso. The torso is gonna continue to flex forward. Okay, you're gonna get to see the rounding of the spine coming up right there. Uh, the glove is firming up, but it is outside of the torso line to the plate which is all good. And then there's the throw, there's the forward shoulder rotation. You can see at release, it looks like his shoulders are completely in line with us. And this is the line over here towards, uh, from first to third. So there's definitely a good amount, this angle right here, a good amount of shoulder rotation, all right? So that's Randy Johnson's delivery. Now, why does he not have to drop as much as other guys? Well, he's 6'10" and he's got a lot of body mass going into foot plants. So he doesn't need to get as much energy into that back leg from gravity as someone who might be like Tim Linscombe's size, right? When Tim Linscombe slams into front foot plant, uh, he just has a lot less mass doing that. So that mass has to be moving faster to create the same amount of energy to throw in the upper 90s. 
Randy doesn't have to do that because he's so big, he has all this mass going into front foot plant, he can generate that same amount of energy without having to drop too much into the back leg, okay? So that's one of the little nuances. So let's go forward and check out some of your deliveries and I'll break them down. First one, here we go. Got an indoor mound. Let's see, we got some slow motion, which is great. Play this through a little bit. And there's our throw. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's look at the very first phase, drift. Definitely have a little bit of drift there. That's almost perfect. It might be a little bit on the low end. You might be able to drift a little bit more, but I'm gonna give this a pass on the drift phase. I mean, here's our, here's our back leg. We go into this, definitely have a little bit of drift. Now, one thing I do see here is there's a little bit of counter rotation of the hips this way. Not necessarily a bad thing, but something to watch for if it causes problems down the line in the delivery. So let's go forward. Next is the drop phase. There's definitely a dropping you can see this back leg right here, drops into it. Okay, pretty darn good. This foot, notice this foot is not kicking back this way like we've seen in some other videos. It's actually kicking here and then going forward. That's great, looking really good there. Okay, what about the rotation phase? Pretty darn good. We can see this hip, let's zoom in on it a little bit. We can see this hip start to rotate around right there. Okay, into landing. Now there's a little bit of a jump, a little bit of a floating in the air right here. So we're getting good energy off of the mound into foot plant. Definitely this hip is somewhat rotated around. It's not all the way rotated around. I'd say the rotation here is pretty good. Okay, uh, and then the block. Now this is not straightening out, but it doesn't have to. Uh, some people don't straighten it out, but as long as this angle stays the same when you land, bam, we land, we brace, this angle stays the same the whole way, pretty good. Could it be a little bit better? Potentially. I'd have to know a little bit more about how hard he's throwing and uh, how old he is and how strong he is and stuff like that, but I'm going to go ahead and give the lower half here a pass. It looks, it looks really good clean. Uh, maybe you could get a little bit deeper in the leg. That's going to come with some additional strength, I think. Maybe you could get a little bit better at the front leg block, but you can see here this hip finishes rotating right there. It's completely done. So all of that energy can now transfer up to the ball. Okay, so lower half's good. What about separate? Bang. Uh, that's foot plant. This shoulder line could be a little bit more closed for me. All right. Uh, it looks like this shoulder's a little bit open out this way, and this shoulder's a little bit open here. Uh, ideally, we'd like to see that retracted back more in something like this position at landing, if we could. So I'm gonna say delay this, delay this torso a little bit, uh, as much as possible, really, without affecting the lower half. Okay, so the separate is a little bit, a little bit lacking on shoulders, hip, hip separation here. You can see this leg flex right here. Okay, and that's really when you start getting the transfer of energy. And you can see how open this torso is. If we get that transfer of energy right back here, we're in a much stronger position. So a slight timing issue right there. Um, what about the load phase? Well, load phase is a little bit off too because of the way this arm is functioning. So here is our shoulder line, okay? And we can see this elbow is a little bit above the shoulder line. Now. One of the reasons this is gonna be problematic is because we're not getting the scap retraction, right? When you get scap retraction, you're stretching the pec and you're stretching the tendons in the shoulder in a positive way where you're gonna get some sort of elastic rebound out of that. If you take this arm up here, when you go to open up, you're not getting any elasticity. The shoulder's just trying to hold itself together and you don't get any of this like rebounding, like scap loading and rebounding effect. Now I think this is happening. We can see this arm very long back here. Not that that's a problem, but we can shorten that up a little bit because we're kind of lifting this ball up like this. We're lifting the ball as opposed to letting the arm hang out and rotating the torso 
away from the arm to load the scap to then allow this to spiral. So the load phase for me is a little bit off. Uh, here we can see this glove side is fighting to stay in front of the torso. Okay, the glove is here, the torso is here, obviously. So it's hard to see from this angle. Let me show you what I mean. If you look at it from over the top, here's the plate, okay? Here is your torso line. Let me draw a better torso line. So let's say this is the torso line. It would be a little bit closed. You can kind of see that's where it's pointing. This is ideal. We want the front glove arm to be outside of that torso line. You see it's outside of the torso line. We want the backside arm to be loaded kind of like this. Again, the head would be right here. You're looking straight down on the delivery. What we're seeing here, uh, uh, let me, the reason for this is that when you get this glove side, let me pick a different color here. When you get this glove side over here, it gives you an axis point to rotate about, okay? Um, let me see if I can get my, having some trouble, there we go, okay. So it gives you an axis to rotate about. Now you can take this whole part and you can swing it along this axis line over here uh, as it rotates this way. All right, it's kind of complex, but you're gonna be able to get your forward shoulder rotation doing it that way. What happens though, when you get the glove in front of the torso line, okay, even if this backside is loaded well, now your head becomes the axis of rotation, which is gonna mean that this is gonna rotate here, this is gonna rotate there, and you're gonna end up throwing the ball from like this position uh, because you're not, you're not gonna get any forward shoulder rotation. You wanna get your shoulders to this point at release, uh, having the glove side in front of your torso, between your torso and the plate at landing is going to cause a lack of uh, powerful rotation, okay? So kind of an upper level concept there. Let's look at how this manifests itself. I'm gonna say the load phase is definitely off. We could work on a little bit of the separation phase and a little bit of load phase here. Let's go forward. How about uh, the spiral? Well, the elbow actually spirals really well. We can see this. The, the elbow is inside right here. It stays inside, or sorry, the hand is inside the elbow. The elbow spirals. The elbow leads tremendous amount of layback, and we're going to get uh, into release right there. How about the throw portion? You're going to see the bowing in the back. That's great. You're going to see the torso continue to tilt forward. You're gonna see this glove actually do a pretty good job of firming up. However, this is, this is one thing to watch for. Watch how this glove, okay, let's, let's go to landing. The glove is here, then the glove is here, then the glove is back here. So at no point does this glove stop, okay? And when, in order to transfer energy, you need to stop one segment so that the rest of the segments can accelerate. It's like kind of flicking a towel. If you ever flick a towel at someone, you go, you stop the front hand, and then the rest of it goes. If you were to flick a towel like this and never stop the front hand, it would never whip, okay? So this is part of, um, this is, this is part of what I was talking about with the glove side being in front of the torso. When the glove side is in front of the torso, between the, between the torso and the plate, okay, the axis of rotation becomes the head, which means the glove side is never going to stop rotating because you're rotating through your head and you're gonna have to rotate like this. The glove side cannot stop because then all of the rotation stops, okay? If you get the glove side outside of the torso line, you can actually rotate the torso forward and stop the glove. It gives you a lot more space, all right? So here's the glove coming into landing. You can see where the glove starts tracking backwards, okay, into release. So this glove side is not firming up we're trying to firm it up too early. We're trying to firm it up right here, all right? And then it's delaying uh, when it actually gets stopped. And so we're not transferring that energy. So lower half is really good on this one. I'm gonna say work on the separation uh, a little bit. One of the ways to do that is to shorten up this arm action a little bit in the back and just let it hang out there. Let it hang out kind of down in this position here, not elevated. So if it's down in this position, it's gonna serve to delay this shoulder rotating, okay? And you're gonna rotate the torso away from it and also work on this glove side uh, retracting back uh, earlier, okay? You wanna pull this thing back as early as possible because it's gonna stop and then you'll be able to grab onto that, hold that in place, and then the rest of the body is gonna, gonna deliver, okay? Uh, good drill. 
to work on. Um, if you watch one of my YouTube videos on my plow ball routine, I actually talk about how to work on these uh, drills. It's in the Baseball 401 playlist. Uh, that's my daily weighted ball routine. So check that one out for some drills that you can do to work on this part of it. Let's go to the next one. Okay, here we are. Let's play this through. Got some slow-mo here. All right, that's what we're looking at. So let's do our analysis. What about our drift phase? Well, we're definitely drifting forward a little bit, okay? I do see a little bit of an elevated uh, front hip here, uh, but we'll see how this plays out. Not necessarily a bad thing. Is there a drop? Definitely a drop. You can see this dropping in of the back leg right here. So drift and drop is acceptable right now. You can see this front foot is coming this direction uh, as opposed to kicking out that direction. So that is good. How about the rotation phase? Okay, we're rotating, rotating, rotating. Foot plant right there. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Look how much this hip is turned over. If we play this back, you can watch the hips right here are definitely turning, getting those things turned over, exactly what we want to see. Now, one thing to mention is this back foot right here. There's two ways to do this. Look, he's coming, he's kind of stepping up on his toe to rotate. Some people would say you got to keep that back heel connected. Uh, not true, because the principle is you want to rotate the hips. And the hips are rotating here into foot plant. Foot plant is right there. Those hips are definitely rotated. He definitely didn't maintain heel connection. There's no problem with that, all right? Plenty of hard throwers, Luis Castillo, Carlos Carrasco, Danny Salazar, just a couple of the ones that I know right off the top of my head that had their back foot function like this. No problem, okay? So what about the block? Bang, front foot hits. Let's look at this front leg. It gets beat a little bit, but it's not bad. Definitely could work on it some though. Let's, let's look at what I'm talking about here. So the front foot hits right here. You can see this part, you can see the shoelaces. One thing to really look for, key tip, as soon as the shoelaces start to like fold down, you know that's when you have weight on the front foot. Okay, so here is our angle. Let's look at how this progresses. You can see that knee drift forward. You can see it rotate out a little bit, okay? And then it starts to push back. So again, it's not bad, not bad, but it could use a little bit of work uh, for how good this back hip is rotating. You'd like to see this leg hit and immediately firm up. You'd like to get rid of these couple frames where it's, it's flexing out, okay? So overall though, lower half wise, I'm gonna give this pretty good. Uh, work on that blocking phase a little bit, but nothing too drastic yet. So let's look at the rest of this. How is our separation? Bang, front foot. Uh, well, we're tilted forward a little bit relative to our hips. I could pick a better color. Let's use yellow for this one. So here's our, our hips and here's our torso line. We're tilted forward a little bit. That could definitely be improved. That's going to affect our separation a little bit, but this shoulder is pinned back, okay? This shoulder here seems to be closer to us than the back shoulder does, so we'll give the separation an okay, but I, we need to see this torso to truly separate this. We need to get the torso back this direction, closer to being perpendicular to the, to the hip line here. There's two types of separation, okay? There's rotational separation, but there's also linear separation. If your torso is tilted forward, then you don't have the ability to get the bow in the back to separate the hip line this way. You can still rotate, that's fine, that's one area, but in order to get the best separation possible, you need to separate in multiple planes of movement. So you wanna separate rotationally, but you wanna have your torso stacked back so that when you do unwind the rotational uh, component of separation, you can then get into the flexion of the spine here to get the flexing forward. Okay, and that's kind of what we're missing. So the separation phase is a little bit lacking because our torso is a little bit forward for my liking. Um, so let's go on here. How's our loading phase? Well, we clearly get the scap loaded back here. We have this inverted uh, action on the arm, uh, which is not ideal, but maybe not a bad thing, depending on where you get at foot plant. 
Look at this shoulder line. Look at the elbow. The elbow does seem to be right at the shoulder line here. So we're saving it, we're, we're saving it. Not a huge concern, definitely something to, to look for. And I think one of the reasons that the torso is tilting forward is because of how this elbow is uh, interacting. When you raise the elbow on the back side like this, it has a tendency to tilt the torso forward because your shoulder just doesn't have that range of motion. So as soon as you go to do it that way, it has a tendency to tilt forward so that your body can unwind that tension. Okay, so the way we're taking this ball away from us uh, might be causing some of these, uh, some of these problems down the line. The, the loading phase though, if you look at the glove side part, yes, we're tilting the torso forward, but look at this glove side gets outside and it firms up right there. And you can see it just doesn't move a whole lot. That's really good. How's the spiral? Well, our arm spiral, clearly we're inside of 90 degrees right here. That elbow is going to roll. The elbow is going to lead and deliver the ball. So that's very positive. Uh, and then our throw, yes, we're tilted forward here, but you can see how that torso continues to tilt forward. We get some rotation there and then the torso flexes forward that way. And so our throwing phase, the glove side is, uh, the glove side is good. Uh, glove side is right here. So a glove side goes from there to there to there. And you can see how that is like the handle of the towel where it stops and then everything else is rotating around it. So that part is really good. The one thing I would work on here is let's not, let's, let's try to adjust how we're taking this elbow away from us, get it out of this upward position, uh, hang out more in with the elbow below the shoulder That'll help tilt the torso back a little bit. That'll help the separation. That'll help the linear separation and the rotational separation. And we'll be able to get to a much better uh, position with the torso at landing so that we can get a little bit more performance out of this delivery. So that would be um, the same type of thing on my plyo ball routine, on my weighted ball routine. I talk a lot about you know, delaying, just letting the arm hang out and letting everything rotate away from that arm. Uh, also in my, um, my velocity development video, my baseball 401 playlist, I talk a lot about athletic drills where you're forcing the movement, you're kind of keeping your hands here and you're like starting the movement first before your hands go. Uh, that'll help clean up a lot of this arm action so we can keep that elbow below the shoulder. Uh, also from a health perspective, if that elbow gets up above the shoulder, it's really at risk for timing issues. If you're slightly off and that elbow slightly above the shoulder when that front foot hits and you go to transfer it, that's uh, problems on the, on the elbow uh, and the shoulder as well. So uh, something definitely I would recommend cleaning up. Watch those two videos and uh, that should give you some, some things to work on. Let's go to the next one. Zoom out here. Okay, so we got some Rapsodo video here. It's kind of cool. Let's play this through. Full, I believe my guy said this was 110% effort. So he is full out right here. Let's look at what we got. Let's look at what we got. Uh, spin axis, zero hours, 24 minutes. Pretty darn good. Uh, spin efficiency, 73%. So we're gonna be cutting the ball and let's see if we can figure out why that is. How's our drift phase? Drift phase is really good. Okay, how's the drop phase? Great, look at this, look at this definitive drop, bang. All right, let's, we just track the, uh, let's track the middle, switch back to red here. Here's this, you can see this kind of white part right there, white part right there, white part right there, okay, white part right there. Now this isn't the perfect way to do it, but you can see this definitive, as you're dropping, you're moving forward. You drop again, you move forward, you drop again, you move forward. That's how you utilize gravity to increase your momentum into foot plant. So the drop phase is great. How's our rotation phase? Uh, uh, gets there, no. Okay, so the rotation phase here is definitely something to work on. Uh, how's our block? And you can see that it's trying to block but it's getting overcome a little bit because of that rotation. 
Okay, so let's talk about the, uh, well, let's get through the rest of the delivery and we'll talk about what to do here. How's our separation phase? Um, foot plant is right there. The separation's pretty good. Uh, we haven't really rotated the hips a whole lot, so we're not gonna be able to get a whole lot of separation here. Uh, but for where the hips are, the separation is okay. The loading phase is definitely good. You can see this shoulder, this scap is pinned back over here. The shoulder's in that direction. Uh, this elbow here is, is pinching back over that direction. So we're in a good spot there. As we go forward, you can see that glove pulled down. Uh, so this is the uh, loading phase. Obviously, this is really good. Um, could be a little bit better with better separation. Uh, this hip and this shoulder are definitely rotating together, all right, and that's, we're leaking a lot of energy there. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Loading phase is good. Uh, how's our spiral phase? Uh, pretty darn good. You can see again, this is inside. We actually rotate elbow spirals first. That's great. Uh, glove side spirals down too. Glove sides there, glove sides there, glove sides there, and then it just firms up. It stays in that same spot, so it gets to that point. Uh, you know, it's not moving back this way or traveling too much forward. So from a blocking standpoint, that glove is basically on this line the entire time, which is great. So that allows us to get rotation. And then the throw phase, uh, the torso's here, you know, torso's there, torso's there. So we're getting that forward flexion. We're getting that rotation around. Uh, we're getting some shoulder rotation, some forward rotation, which is good. But it all comes back to this for me. Here's our drop phase. Now, this is like a vertical shin on the backside, okay? It's very close to a vertical shin angle. We need to get this knee, we need to get on the inside part of our foot, and we need to get this knee to track forward a little bit. We're not, I'm not talking about getting the knee to be like caved in, okay? Uh, I'm talking about getting the knee to track forward uh, a little bit. Right now, all the activation is on the outside part. Uh, the knee's wanting to push this way, the foot's trying to push this way, the hip is trying to open up around that way. Not what we want to see. We want to get on the inside part of this foot so that when we're putting energy into the ground, now we have one point of contact on the ground here, okay? So this is putting energy into the ground in this vector. If we get this knee to come forward a little bit and the knee is now here, when you're putting energy into, this, into the ground, you're putting it on this vector, okay? Let me, let me change that color so we can see the difference. You'd be putting energy on this vector, okay? That means that you have some vertical component, but you also have some uh, horizontal component, all right? That's gonna allow you to generate more energy down the mound without having to use this outer part of your hip to press energy this way to then create energy this way, all right? If, you're, if I'm pressing against a wall, and I press into the wall, and the wall doesn't move, I'm gonna go forward, okay? This back foot is like the wall. That's not moving on the mound. So if you press energy backwards into that foot, you're going to go forward, okay? The issue is you wanna get this knee to start rotating this way instead of extending you that way, and when you Put pressure, when you maintain this vertical shin right here, you're gonna have to use this hip and this outside of the foot to press into the wall, so to speak, to push you forward towards the plate. Alternatively, what you can do is get to the inside part of this foot. You can get this knee to track forward a little bit more. And then when you're putting pressure down in the drop phase, okay, when you're putting pressure down into the drop phase, you can see right here how this knee is actually opening up uh, this direction. Watch through these frames, you can see that knee open up. See that? The kneecap turns more this direction as opposed to this direction. Watch that again. So the kneecap's kind of pointing here. Then we go down and the kneecap is now pointing here. That's a sign that the backside hip is opening the wrong way. Okay, when you're coming down, if you get this knee here or here, then you can put, again, that direction of force. You're gonna have some this way and some that way. Right now, you have all your force 
directly down, which means in order to get any sort of force forward, you're gonna have to press backwards with this hip and backwards with this foot, which is gonna spiral this knee out, which takes us away from rotation. So now when we're supposed to be more in this position, knee being here, okay, more here, and then at this position, we should be knee down and uh, all the way rolled in, the hip rotated in, uh, we're delayed. And then we're trying to rotate, but this is kind of extending, all right? And then the hips try to rotate, but we don't quite get there at landing. You can see the stripe on the, on the hip here, but the hip line is still, if we had to look at it overhead, here's our plate, all right? The hip line, I think, would still be about like this uh, at landing. Ideally, we'd want that here, and that's just a timing thing. You get the foot to roll, like you get the hip open, it's just delayed because this initial spreading, putting force here, force here, knee rotating out this way is delaying when we can get to those positions. So I need to see more, uh, more weight on the inside part of the foot and then more of this knee tracking forward, okay? Let's go, uh, let's go on to the next one. Um, actually, let's go back to Randy Johnson really quick and I'll show you what I mean. Watch this knee, okay? This knee moves forward. See how that knee is tracking forward? Okay, it tracks forward, it tracks forward. It's not concave, all right? You're not like collapsing your knee, but the knee is just tracking forward. You watch this. Here we are at top of leg lift. There's the knee. Then the knee's in front of that circle, then the knee's in the third circle, then the knee's forward, so the knee is tracking forward the whole time. There is no delay of the knee, delay of the knee, delay of the knee. Let's go back to our delivery up here. Let's look at this knee. Here's our knee. Camera moves a little bit, there's the knee. There's the knee. Now the knee wants to start moving forward, but we're way down the mound, all right? So that's what I see, that's what I would uh, work on, more weight on the inside part of the foot and let the knee come with you as you get into your sit. Don't open the knee up, don't open the legs up almost like you're doing a squat, like you're trying to spread the floor on a squat. A lot of people teach that, that's the wrong thing to do for hip rotation. So that would be my recommendation on this one. Let's go to the next one here. Okay, looks like we got some cameras. Looks like a pretty cool facility here, let's play this through. Got slow motion again, great. Thank you for that. And there's our throw. All right, let's wind this back. How are we doing on the drift phase? Good drift phase. See a little bit of movement forward, but not too much, keeping that hip line pretty level. Okay, hips are, ah, there's a little bit of elevation there, but not terrible. So we got decent drift phase. How's our drop phase? Definitely a definitive drop right there. You can see the center of mass drop into that back leg. And look at this knee just by comparison. Watch this knee here. As it moves forward, you can see how that knee's tracking this way the entire time. And then that's going to rotate. The weight is more on the inside part of the foot right here. Uh, and that allows the knee to then rotate down, just by comparison. Anyway, so the drop phase is really good. How's our rotation phase? Bang, hips are definitely rotated into landing. You can see landing is right there. You can see the quad flex. Do we have any more? Nope. You can see the quad flex right here. So we know we're at landing. This hip is definitely open. You can see this hip line is somewhat like this. Obviously the angle's a little bit tough to see, but the hips are definitely open. And just by comparison, again, another early heel disconnection right here that is not a problem. Look at that, up on the toe, stepping, not a problem at all because the hips get rotated. So this is a definite um, style versus principle argument on the back heel connection. So how's our block? Pretty darn good, pretty darn good. You can see a little bit of flex right here as it absorbs the force, and then it's just dead stable. Look at this angle. Look how stable that is to the entire delivery before it starts pushing back. So pretty darn good block right there, I'll say. Um, how is our, 
Yep, the hips stop rotating right here well before release, so they can transfer all that energy. How's our separation phase? Bang. Separation is okay. Okay, we might be able to get a little bit more. Ideally, I'd like to see us more in like this position on the upper half. Uh, at that position on the lower half. So this, this shoulder definitely looks further this way. This shoulder looks closer to us at landing. So we wanna reverse that. So separation definitely could use some work here. How's our loading phase? Well, if we look at it in the context of when the arms are loading, this arm seems to be loading okay. This arm seems to be loading okay. I'm gonna give this an okay. Ideally, I'd like to see this glove. Well, the glove does get outside the torso line and you can see that it actually does, it pulls early, bang, and then the glove stops right there, and it provides a really nice uh, kind of handle to that whip, so to speak. Uh, so we'll give the loading phase uh, a good, with the caveat that it's just out of timing, uh, and that comes with the separation phase. We're not delaying the torso rotation enough where we can get the timing of this loading to be timed up with when the front foot hits to get maximum uh, energy transfer out of that, but the loading itself is good. It's just being affected by the separation. So how's our spiral? Um, inside right there, elbow rolls, we get good separation or a uh, good layback, I should say, and then uh, we go forward. So how's our throw? Uh, well, at landing, we're yeah, a little bit open on the torso, uh, like we've talked about. The torso continues to flex forward which is a good thing, okay? So that's positive. The glove side works very well. We continue to get some shoulder rotation, but because of the timing, this shoulder and this hip are rotating at the same time. And so that kills the actual rotation. So we get a little bit of a linear push here in the delivery, which kills some of our forward shoulder rotation. Uh, and is one of the reasons we see this release is like, right here where the shoulder line is, looks like it's pointing basically straight towards us um, as opposed to pointing more out this direction uh, where the shoulder would be here and the arm would deploy. So the head would be here and the other shoulder would be back over there. Uh, but I think that's all just a timing thing. So overall the segments work I think really well. Um, the block leg, uh, pretty firm. The hips do stop rotating, but I think the timing issue, front foot down, we're a little bit open on the torso, so we're gonna end up in a position where we can't get that full energy transfer. Work on delaying that torso uh, as much as possible without changing the lower half, all right? You wanna just let this arm hang out, let this front shoulder hang out closed as long as possible, okay? Um, some of those drills in my velocity development program uh, would be super helpful um, for that. And another thing is when you take the ball away like this, when you turn your hand like this, it's gonna elevate this elbow a little bit and it's gonna have a tendency to uh, shift you forward and open early because when you, if you're here and you try to keep that torso delayed, when you load, it's very hard to get the arm to spiral up as opposed to having the arm in this position where you're, you're, it's more neutral. So now you can delay it as long as possible because when you load, it can just load and spiral really quickly as opposed to having to unwind, get the elbow down, turn the hand here. All this takes time, so while you're unwinding it, your torso ends up open, as opposed to being here where your torso can stay closed and then fold everything in. So I would work on this, this hand takeaway a little bit. We do see some of this elevated uh, you know, back shoulder. Here is the shoulder line. Obviously that elbow is above. Now, the reason I didn't point it out is because by the time we get to landing right there, uh, we're in a good position but this might be affecting some of that early torso rotation. So something to be conscious of. All right, let's go to the next one. All right. So let's play this through. How is our drift phase? Well, we haven't really made any progress towards uh, the plate. Look here at the, at the foot. So we have this big backwards turn, which is stylistically okay, unless it creates some difficulties down the line. And there just hasn't been any movement 
uh, forward towards the plate. You can see the head here relative to this pole in the background. Very little movement towards the plate because we're still having to unwind this whole early, um, early rotation. So I'm going to say the drift phase could use some work. Uh, how's the drop phase? Well, we do have a distinct drop. We do go down, but the problem here is that we haven't used that depth to create any energy forward. We haven't used it to accelerate us towards the met or towards the plate. So now we've just lost all that energy. Now we're just storing it in the quad because we've already hit the bottom and now we're just hanging out there. So that elastic energy, that vector of force, like I was saying, where you know some, if this is the angle of the backside, you have some downward force and some forward force. Uh, right now, all we have is downward force. So we've just lost all this potential energy. Now we're just having to use energy in the quad to store that potential energy and we're losing the elasticity. So the drop phase is there. You're clearly very strong, very able to hold this back here, which is great. We just haven't used that to create any usable energy for velocity. So now we get to unwind this. Now we see this knee start tracking forward, okay? And it actually does rotate okay into landing, which is right there, right? We do see that this hip gets open. So the drift and the drop are not, uh, are not where I'd ideally like to see them. Um, we do get the hips rotated. So the most difficult part of the lower half, the hip rotation, we got that, which is great. Let's look at the block. I mean, that block is really good. Um, foot hits right there. And then you can see that front leg is actually very firm. Um, the hips do stop right there and then energy transfers up to the ball. So the rotation and the block are pretty good, all right? Uh, unfortunately, I think that the early rotation of the hips um, in the drift phase and the drop phase being the way it is, uh, we're not putting ourselves in a position where we can actually use that energy. Um, okay, so let's look at the rotation phase. Uh, sorry, the separation phase. Bang, foot's in the ground. You can see this is definitely, this shoulder is definitely over here, this shoulder is over here. Way too open at landing. So now when all this energy hits into the hip, there's nowhere for it to go. It just dissipates here in the hips because this shoulder is already ahead of the hips. Uh, ideally, I'd like to see the torso in this line where this shoulder is further back this way and this shoulder is closer towards us at the time when this foot hits, which is right there. You can see how much this is really opened up. Um, so separation is definitely needing some work. Let's talk about the loading phase. Look at this. Scap is retracted back over here, fantastic. On this side though, here's our shoulder line and look at this elbows above, okay? So now we're not gonna get this stretching of the pec, loading of the scap and rebounding. We're up top and so we're kind of getting this, getting the elbow back down to throw as opposed to loading the elbow to throw. And so that's gonna diminish some of our velocity as well. You can see this elbow still above, right? And then you come into landing and then we get it, it's still above, you know, it's definitely still above slightly, but we're almost having to bring that elbow up and then bring it down. And so this whole time that we're doing this, there's no loading going on. There's just some instability in the shoulder, honestly, here, trying, the shoulder's trying to stabilize, but you're not getting any of the pec stretching. Uh, obviously when you like you do a bench press, you're gonna be in this area, the pec stretches and you're powerful at coming out of it. You wanna utilize that mechanism in the loading phase as the torso rotates away, you get this stretch, arm flicks up, now it rebounds. What we have here is this elbow's up, so we're not getting any of that pec stretch, we're just getting this kind of like, oh shoot, stabilize the shoulder type of thing. So the loading phase on the front side, odd. Uh, the glove scoops up underneath, it's, it's definitely an odd style. I mean, look at this. You don't see it very often, but the effectiveness of it, the principles of it, very, very good. I wouldn't change anything about that glove. Look, this elbow gets loaded out here. The glove stays in a very similar position the entire time. It actually travels forward with the torso a little bit, which is elite. So the glove side, very, very good uh, on the loading. Just the, the arm side is, is lacking a little bit on the load phase. So let's look at our spiral. Uh, 
elbow does lead and we get some layback right there. So I'm gonna give this spiral it is, a good, uh, is a good spiral and we actually get good forward shoulder rotation, which is part of the throw phase. Uh, you can see that this torso from ideally where we would be at landing continues to travel forward and flex forward and we do get some of this shoulder rotation. So the throw phase I think is being affected by everything else that's before it, but we compensate okay and we get a pretty good throw phase in there. Uh, so what I would say here is look, we gotta fix the timing issues and I think that all starts with this early rotation. So you rotate the hip and the shoulder back together. Now when you start coming out of it, the hip and the shoulder are rotating at the same time. Once the torso starts rotating, you're not gonna stop it. You can't rotate the torso, stop it, and then rotate again. It's just not how it works. Physics doesn't work that way. So when the torso is already starting to rotate right here, it just continues to rotate early into foot plant. So to me, I think if we can get rid of this big rotation here, stay a little bit more square, we'll get a better timed drop, all right? The earlier you can open these hips, the more the torso is gonna to fight to stay closed, which is gonna give you that good separation and uh, we can get the timing of this delivery uh, to be fixed up a little bit. So that's what I would recommend on this one. Let's go ahead to the next one, play this through. There we go, okay. Let's check this out real quick. How is, there's a ball just like flying across the screen. Look at this, Wee! All right, initial drift, okay, it's okay. We got some elevated hips here. We got some rotation around here. So I think this is more of a fake drift. You can see this knee is very, very vertical. Uh, and so we're, I think we're lacking in this drift phase a little bit. I'd like to see less rotation of the hips. Let me get a better color so we can see it here. Less rotation of the hips around that way in the drift phase. How's our drop phase? Definitely a distinct drop, but we see this kind of coiling in the back leg, almost dropping into the back leg as the knee is coming up. If your knee is working up and your back leg is dropping, you're losing some of that like energy that you can get a, an impulse from. You're losing some of that potential energy from gravity. So you're just taking out the distance that you can drop, which takes away the energy you can get from gravity. So uh, I'd like to see a little bit less of that, but we do have a pretty good drop phase. How's our rotation phase? Pretty darn good, pretty good. Um, into landing right there, the hips are definitely trying to rotate. You can see coming up on the heel here, another a heel disconnector that actually rotates the hips pretty darn well. You can see the foot is down right there and the hip line is definitely pointing somewhere over here. So there's definitely some rotation in it. That's good. Let's move forward. How's our block? Block leg is actually really good. Look at this, we hit right there, the front foot, bang. Knee drifts forward just a tick, but then this angle just bang, drives it forward. Okay, so I'm gonna give the rotation phase an okay. The rotation could be a little bit better. The block phase is really good. Uh, I think we're getting, I think those are getting affected by the drift and the drop phase. Uh, how is our separation? Well, let's see, landing right there. You can see this is loaded back and this is loaded back. It definitely looks like uh, this shoulder is closer to us or at least the same distance away from us as this shoulder up here. So uh, from this angle, it's hard to tell specifically or, or exactly I should say, but I'm gonna give the separation phase uh, a pass. I think with a little bit better hip rotation, our separation would be a little bit, a little bit better. The load phase is fantastic. Um, how's our spiral phase? Well, spiral could use some work, okay? Spiral could use some work. And how's the throw phase? Uh, throw is pretty good. Uh, let's talk about the glove real quick. At landing, here's the glove. There's the glove and that just moves forward a little bit with the torso. Um, so the, the glove is good. You can see how, how outside of the torso line it really is. Bang. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm looking for here on the spiral phase is it looks like the torso is opening up away from the arm kind of like this 
And so we're, we're losing some of this ability to roll the elbow and fire it forward. Uh, the torso kind of runs away and this kind of just like drags through. And so we don't get a ton of layback. We're not getting this rotation and the flexion of the torso here uh, to drive the elbow forward. We're getting the torso rotating away and then we don't get as much layback as we could. Um, so the spiral phase definitely could use some work, but I think uh, to me that all gets cleaned up if we can get rid of this elevated hip, rotated hip right there, and a little bit of depth in this back leg, if we can straighten that up a little bit and then kind of drop into it, as opposed to sinking into it early, uh, we're gonna be in a much better position and things down the line will clean up. The hip rotation will come a little bit easier, which means the torso delaying will come a little bit easier. Your sequencing will be a little bit better, which means you'll be able to actually fire this thing off in the right way. So that's what I would say, I would say, on the start right here, I would, I would work on the start and that should help clean things up down the line. All right, I think we got a couple more. Let's look at this one here. Okay. How is our drift phase? Hard to tell from this angle, but you can definitely see some forward movement there. Okay, drift is okay. Uh, looks like we might be a little bit elevated in the front side, but hard to tell from this angle. There's definitely a, a drop phase. Could get a little bit deeper, but there's definitely a drop phase. How's the rotation? Ah, our rotation phase is not great. Um, hard to tell on the block and hard to tell really from this angle how other things are gonna go. But I can tell you this, with this rotation going on, um, nothing down the line is gonna be good. This is where you're losing all of your performance. Look at this hip line. The hip line is coming basically straight back uh, towards us. Now, if you look at this, there might be a little bit elevated front side, but we get down from here, turn this knee in. You gotta get this knee to like rotate down. You gotta get this hip to go around. And actually looking at it, it definitely looks like there's some upward tilt to this. So if we can get this front hip down, we can get the hips more level. Um, let me draw it here. If you're looking at it from the side angle, if your hips are like this, here's your front leg, here's your back leg, you can't rotate uh, until those hips get to this position where they're level. Now you can spin this around, now you can spin this knee in. Um, so I think if we can sink this front hip down a little bit, uh, we can get this knee in the drop phase. So we're here, we can get this knee to continue to drop to drop and to rotate around uh, will be good. There's just a disconnect here where we get to a good position, but instead of this heel coming uh, up maybe and going on the toe to rotate around or the heel rotating, kind of folding in on its side so it's here and it kind of rolls this way to allow the foot to come. Those are your two strategies on the back side. Uh, what we get is we just get this back foot that's on the rubber, it's just delayed, it's there, it's there, it's there, and everything kind of goes away from it, but the hip never rotates. Uh, so by the time we land, which is right there, you can see this front shoulder is more this way and the back shoulder is more this way. Uh, we're losing a lot of separation. There's no real separation. You can see this hip and this shoulder now rotate at the same time, uh, and that's where all of, our, all of our deficiencies are coming. So back side rotation is huge. This move right here is pretty good, but then this knee doesn't roll. It doesn't go, this hip doesn't go. Uh, it just, everything in the delivery slides forward this way. Um, and you run away from that hip and that's where all your velo is going. So we got to work on backside rotation. Let that knee track forward like we talked about with Randy Johnson's delivery. Let it track forward and then let it roll as you're going down the mound. Okay. And I think this is our last, oh, we got two more. Some young guys. Play this through. Pretty darn good. Okay, let's come back. Let's check this out. So, drift. Definitely a little bit of drift. You can see that, very nice. Not too much, not too little, just a little bit. Great, where's the drop? Definite drop right there. You can see that going down. Very good. Rotate. Bang, look at that. Hip is definitely opening. You can see that through these couple of frames here. And this is what I was talking about with this knee. It's tracking and it's rolling down right there into landing, very nice. How's our block leg? Ooh, look at that. 
one frame here absorbs and then drives back. Okay? Very good block leg. Now, there is a little bit of sinking of the hips into the front side. You can see this knee kind of collapsing in. All right, and that's something we can look at and try to identify what the issue is there. Uh, but lower half wise, looking pretty darn good so far. How's our separation phase? Uh, torso's tilted both forward and also back, you know, towards this area over here. Uh, so we're definitely a little bit, a little bit early on the torso. Um, so we're losing a little bit of separation there. Ideally, I'd like to see the torso more in like that position if possible at landing somewhere between this position and this position on the torso. We don't have that frame on this video. It's a 30 frame per second video, but somewhere in between those two um, would, be, would be better for me. Um, our loading phase, definitely very good. You can see this pinch of the scat back here. It might be a little bit early. We got a, little, we got a lot of torso turn, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Very Darvish-esque if we can get out of it. But I think that uh, torso turn is causing this glove to be in front of the torso. So the torso line is here and the glove is kind of like over here and here's our plate. Uh, if you're looking at it from the top, we got to get that glove elbow at least over outside of the torso line to the plate like we talked about earlier. It gets there eventually, but it's kind of blocking. It's kind of blocking the torso. So the load phase, the separation phase is a little bit off because that torso is forward a little bit and open a little bit at landing. The load phase, the glove side is blocking off the torso a little bit too much. This is, to me, it's like you have a lot of counter rotation in the torso, like you're trying to fight to keep that separation. It's just a little bit early a little bit early and then by the time you hit the end range, you're already coming out of it as the front foot hits. So I think a little bit less of a turn early on will give us a little bit more well-timed separation later on. Uh, the segments themselves, the glove side segment actually functions pretty well. I mean, you can see that glove is like, it definitely firms up. It travels forward with the torso, that's good. Our elbow spiral is fantastic. Look at this, lay back and fires everything forward. Very nice. Uh, and the torso obviously continues from this angle all the way to this angle. You can see the bow in the torso right there. So that's all very good. To me, this is just a timing thing. Just a timing thing. This big initial turn, the glove side pointing straight out here, um, turns the, the upper body a lot where the, you know, the upper body, if, if the plate is this way, the upper body is almost like facing here. So now when the hips go to rotate, everything, you're trying to hold on to it, but you're diving forward, which means the glove has to try to hold you over here as opposed to being able to open up. Um, so I think a little bit less of an early turn, a little bit less maybe here, will allow the torso to be a little bit more neutral that when the hips go, now you're gonna rotate away where this glove can balance out and you can sequence up everything a little bit better because when you get to this position right there, you can see this torso is already tilted forward, like I said. It's opened up this way a little bit. Um, and you're also tilting off kind of this way towards first base as opposed to being able to maintain that posture. So to me, everything here functions really well. It's just a, it's just a timing thing. Um, and I think that it's this initial glove coming out this way. If you can think about the glove almost coming out this way, almost like a 45 degree angle. So you're not going straight out like this. You're going maybe a little bit more 45 degrees, um, you know, if you have, if you have the, the plate, the mound, uh, you'd wanna be going not directly this way, but you'd wanna be going a little bit like that, a little bit forward with that glove action. That might help clean some things up um, and allow you to get this glove. You can definitely see that this glove, if, if this is the torso line right here, the glove is definitely here and here's our plate. Uh, we, we need to see that glove elbow over on this side at the point of landing so that you can use this as your rotation to drive everything forward. Uh, over here, you're going to have to tilt off to the side. Worth talking about, if your glove is in front of your torso, you have two options. Either spin everything and the arm flies out here, and that's where you end up with a lot of stress on the UCL, or dive everything off open this way to clear the arm and roll the elbow, which is how I did it for many years, uh, college days and early pro days, I would block my glove in front of me at landing and I would dive everything like this to be able to clear the elbow. 
The only problem with that is you don't get the shoulder hip separation to really drive the easy velocity. So that's what I would say on this one. Let's look at our last guy here. 69 miles an hour, very nice, very nice. Okay, how's our drift phase? Not much drift. Okay, we got a little bit going on here. I think we can get a little bit more, a little bit more drift. Ideally, we'd see this knee just track forward just a little bit. We'd see this hip track forward just a little bit into peak leg lift. Okay, so now we're gonna come forward. How's our drop phase? Well, we definitely drop into it. No problem on the drop phase. The only issue is that this is still vertical. That shin's still vertical. So when we're getting this big mass to drop down, all of that is going straight down into the ground and it's not producing very much forward. So that gets solved with the drift. I think the drop phase is great. How's our rotation? Okay, you can see landing is right there because you can see the dirt uh, squirt out from underneath the foot. Pretty good. Look at this rotation. This rotation is great. You can definitely see the hip line is like, uh, let's see, the hip line is basically here. That's a terrible color. Let's use, let's use uh, yellow. You can see the hip line is like this. Okay. Uh, great rotation. How's our block? Wow. Look at that. Great block. Foot down. That angle on the front leg doesn't change at all. Here, there, there, and then it straightens. Very nice. This hip definitely gets all the way closed. You can see the side of the hips right there. So the lower half, I'd say pretty darn good. Losing a little bit of it with this vertical shin in the beginning, but you compensate well for it and you get to good spots. So I'm not gonna say to change any of that because you're accomplishing the principles as they need to be done. Let's look at our separation. So here's landing. Separation is pretty good. Uh, it looks like uh, we're at least even here. Um, if not this shoulder being a little bit further back uh, than this shoulder. So that's good. Uh, how is our loading phase? This position, great. Yep. So I say loading here is really good. That glove elbow, you can see it from this here. Let's look at these couple frames. It's kind of in line with the torso here. Then the elbow goes back this way. Bang. And then it goes back that way one more time and gets us into a great spot at landing. Now you can see how that glove here translating forward with the torso but it's, it's stopped. It's here and it's just moving forward with the torso as the torso rotates. Great glove side, great loading phase. How's our spiral? Spiral is very nice. And the throw phase, um, get that bow in the back and the tilting forward of the torso and that rotation all the way around. So overall, this is really clean, really, really clean. I like it a lot. Uh, the one thing that I, that I could, I mean, I'm just nitpicking here. Actually, I'm not even gonna nitpick because you're clearly, uh, you're 10, 12, something like that. And for a 10 or 12 year old or however old you really are, um, this is great. So don't do anything differently. Uh, the only thing that I would be careful of is if we can let this in the drift, in the drift phase, if we can get a little bit more drift, you know, instead of having our center of mass here, if we can get it to there, I'm talking like, like a couple inches, okay? Not a whole lot, just like a little bit. We can get this knee to track forward to there a little bit. It might give us a little bit more energy into foot plant, which might drive a little bit more velocity, but overall, man, this looks really great. Um, kind of brings up a point that, you know, young kids that just learn how to throw by being athletic move really, really well uh, if they don't get messed up by, um, you know, poor coaching, I guess, in the, in the early stages of life. But really clean delivery right here. I like this one a lot. And I think that's all we have for today. So uh, hopefully you guys learned something. I'm gonna do some more of these if you guys would like me to. I got all these videos from my Discord channel. So if you guys would like to join that, I'm gonna leave the link in the description of this video. It'll be valid for six hours after this video launches. So all you new people that watch to the end, 
will get to join in and you can submit your delivery there and maybe I'll break it down in a future video. So uh, let me know what you guys wanna see next. I broke down Randy Johnson's delivery at the beginning. If you wanna see me break down another big leaguers, leave me that name in the comments uh, and maybe I'll add it to the next video. Overall, these mechanics are actually looking pretty darn good. Uh, hopefully you guys can take something from this video and, and learn from it and get a little bit better and advance your career as well. So without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you have a great day.